In the last few years, there's been an alarming rise of autoimmune disease, but an exciting new case report published in the journal Frontiers in Nutrition discusses three case studies of patients suffering from two debilitating autoimmune conditions, Sjogren's syndrome and systemic lupus erythematosus. The patients switched their diets to a customized plant-based nutritional regime, which had quite astounding results. Whilst the full regime includes a wide range of plant foods, its initial stage seems to focus on three particular foods, but we'll learn in precise detail what they ate throughout. Before we have a look at the study, can I ask a huge favour? If you find this information helpful, I would be so grateful if you could like the video. This helps it to potentially reach more people who might need to hear it. Now, Sjogren's syndrome, for short SS, is a chronic autoimmune disorder that happens when the immune system attacks the glands that make moisture in the eyes, mouth, and other parts of the body, with many sufferers reporting symptoms of fatigue, joint and muscle pain, to name just a few. The disease can also damage the lungs, kidneys, and nervous system. There's currently no cure for Sjogren's syndrome, but treatment focuses on managing the symptoms. Systemic lupus erythematosus, or SLE, is another chronic autoimmune condition that affects the immune system, but can also cause problems with your skin, joints, kidneys, and other organs. So it can often present with joint pain, severe swelling, and rashes, and in particular, this butterfly rash on the cheek and nose. There's evidence to suggest that approximately one half of people with lupus experience serious kidney problems in glomerulonephritis. An SLE can be associated with pleuritis, which is inflammation in the lungs. There's currently no cure for lupus, but the symptoms can often be treated with medicines that reduce inflammation in the body. This study discusses three case reports involving patients suffering from both SLE and SS, who followed a strict rapid recovery program developed by Dr. Brooke Goldner. The patients who are all women had daily monitoring, follow-ups, and personalized dietary modification over four or six weeks. The recovery protocol includes unlimited raw vegetable intake, but requires a minimum daily intake of 16 ounces of leafy greens, i.e. spinach or kale and cruciferous vegetables, half a cup of flax or chia seed, or three tablespoons of cold-pressed flaxseed oil, and 96 to 120 ounces of water. Dr. Goldner recommends at least 64 ounces of green smoothie per day as a way to more easily consume the recommended vegetables, flax, and chia seed. Just a reminder, flax and chia must be ground before consuming. Fruit is recommended at no greater than 25% of total dietary intake. Vitamin B12 and vitamin D supplementation is recommended, plus one teaspoon of salt a day. Once symptoms are in remission, cooked whole plant foods are incorporated into the diet. And after six months of remission, processed vegan foods and foods with sugar and oil are allowed one to two times a week. Now, half a cup of flax a day is a large amount. And what about the concerns with its cyanide content and estrogenic effects? Well, we'll address this at the end of the video. But first, let's take a look at the patients in the study. The first was a 40-year-old woman who was diagnosed with SLE and SS in 2013 during her ninth month of pregnancy. The second case was that of a 54-year-old woman who experienced undiagnosed SLE and SS-associated photosensitivity, butterfly rash, itchy scalp, and constant fatigue since 2006. In May 2015, her SLE escalated to pleurisy, which finally led to her diagnosis. The final case was a 45-year-old woman who experienced the symptoms of SLE and SS between 2003 and 2008, but was formally diagnosed in late 2008 when her fourth child developed neonatal lupus. She was also diagnosed with Hashimoto's disease. The findings in the case report were overwhelmingly positive, with all three cases experiencing significant and remarkable rapid symptom remission following strict adherence to the intervention. The first patient consumed one 64-ounce green smoothie daily, composed predominantly of raw leafy greens such as kale or spinach, water and fruit added for flavour. She also incorporated flaxseed, first starting with half a cup and working up to a full cup. Other meals throughout the day included foods such as salad and raw vegetables, in addition to drinking a gallon of water. The only non-raw food that she consumed was Ezekiel bread, which is not typically included in the protocol but was allowed due to increased hunger during pregnancy. Two days into the programme, she reported that her pelvic pain had stopped. Most other symptoms completely resolved over the four weeks, including dryness, pain and fatigue. She remained active during pregnancy, gave birth to a healthy child, recovered quickly from her C-section and continued with no pain and increased energy post-birth. Two months after completing the program, her photosensitivity disappeared. By approximately six months, she had discontinued both hydroxychloroquine and aspirin. Her lab results showed a decrease in SSB, a marker antibody for Sjogren's syndrome, as well as a decrease in partial thromboplastin time. She transitioned to a maintenance diet, still including no processed foods, 
40 ounces per day of green smoothie, a gallon of water and approximately 90% raw whole plant foods during the day with a cooked plant-based meal for dinner. As of last contact in December 2023, she remained off all medications, had an additional healthy pregnancy and delivery in 2020 and reported no recurrence of symptoms. She reports feeling that the protocol was such an easy fix for my illnesses. Case 2 had enrolled in the four-week programme, which included two 32-ounce green smoothies per day, a salad at lunch, and dinner consisting of foods such as kale, cabbage and Brussels sprouts. Her symptoms, including neuropathy, joint stiffness, pain, fatigue, itchy scalp and photosensitivity, resolved within 14 days, and dry eye improved over several months. After six months, her ophthalmologist confirmed she no longer had any visible eye inflammation and showed no physical symptoms of dry eye. Her anti-double-stranded DNA test results also decreased. After a year, she replaced one salad with a cooked plant-based meal, still eliminating all processed foods. She discontinued hydroxychloroquine in January 2017. After roughly two years, she significantly reduced the amount of omega-3 she consumed. As of last contact in July 2023, she remains symptom-free and continues to eat a whole food plant-based diet that incorporates both daily green smoothies as well as cooked foods. She stated, I'm doing so well, I'm convinced that the program saved my life. Case 3 began in June 2021 for a six-week program. Within three weeks, her migraines and pain on her skin resolved. Her dry mouth and dry eyes significantly improved. Her recovery diet included large salads and she estimates that she consumed roughly 1.5 to 2 pounds of raw cruciferous vegetables and or spinach, approximately 1 pound of other vegetables, microgreens, 6 tablespoons of flaxseed oil and initially 128 ounces of water per day which needed to be reduced to 96 ounces and then finally to 60 to 80 ounces. Her complement protein 3, C3, complement protein 4, C4 and white blood cell counts all improved, moving into normal ranges. After 8 to 12 months of adhering to the protocol and eating mostly raw foods, all symptoms had resolved. She's felt symptom-free since early 2022. Now, what's possibly most impressive is that symptom remission was observed to be long-term, with two of the three cases reporting ongoing symptom-free periods of six and seven years respectively. In all cases, the women were able to stop using their prescription drugs and just use the rapid recovery program. These findings show the profound impacts of dietary interventions in treating chronic disease, including SLE and SS. Now, while three isolated case studies are insufficient to establish mechanisms or causality, the success rate of these dietary interventions and their long-lasting effects at least put them on the map as promising future interventions against these types of chronic disease. It's important to note these patients were monitored closely under medical supervision, so any changes you make to your diet should be discussed first with your healthcare professional. Dr. Goldner has so many free resources on her website and YouTube channel. All the links will be below. So what about the concerns? Concerns with flaxseed cyanide content and estrogenic effects. Well, we went into it in great depth previously, so make sure to watch this video next.